make some noise for Nat. She's coming through. Let's see. Yeah. Hey. Now you have to imagine the applause. Everyone's welcome. Okay. Up to I can hear. I can the hear it. Right now. <laughs> do you know what I love? I love it when you um are at the airport and you do your. I'm here, everyone. <laughs> like no autographs. Yes. So I miss that. That's one of the things I, I miss, miss you know. Uh, <laughs> I miss that. I miss that. That's the only reason I want to travel again is so I can do my fake fanfare when I land, I love it. you know? It's so good. It's so good. Uh, now, are you seeing all the applause? Can you see all the claps? The, the I can see are them. Going wild. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm trying um, not to look at them, actually. <laughs> real. The love is real. Okay, yeah, um, hey, good. mate, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I really Thanks do. Thanks so much. It's um, great. I was thinking today about how we first met. And it's kind of interesting because we yeah. met on tour. Yeah, we um, did. That sounds we so on, fancy, like, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, we were on the road. <laughs> we're like a big we were on deal. The road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like a 10-day tour. And uh, you were like doing logistics and stuff, weren't you? Yeah, I think I was Lots of... production assistant or something like that. Okay, yes, yeah. production assistant. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this, but we were, we were. I think it was Glasgow. I think we were in the venue in Glasgow, yeah. Sticky Floors. And yeah. I, I asked the question to you, it was something like this. Um, now, if you could talk about one thing and everyone <laughs> heard it, or if you, if you had one message to share, what would it be? And I'm going to butcher mm. it, but it was something to the effect of, I would talk about the black experience and I would yeah. talk about what it means to be black. And I'll talk about, um, you know, that aspect of life and, and your experience. And, and I was like, it was right at the beginning of the tour and I was really impacted by it. And I remember saying to you, Oh, you've got to start a podcast and talk <laughs> about this. I need to hear your perspective on this. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and then for like, that was like nearly two years ago. And we've been talking yeah. about doing a podcast for ages and having this conversation yeah, and yeah. Um, this is giving a bit of context, yeah, because yeah. the people joining us may or may not know. But then, then recently, you have you you started this account, um, Everyday Racism, mm -hmm. and it's brought so much uh, exposure to this conversation, and it has become a platform for you to share that very message. Yeah, and from the very get go of you starting it, and from I mean, I've obviously. I know you and I've been following you, so your message has been consistent. But from you starting the Everyday Racism, I have learned so much. And yeah. I just feel like we are in a time where, I'm gonna show up in a minute and let you speak, but um, nice. <laughs> we, we are in a time where conversation is so important. Mm. And I feel, I feel as a white man, it's so, so critical now more than ever that I'm in on independent pursuit of knowledge information and understanding mm, of yeah. the black experience of white privilege of racial inequality of prejudice and educating myself and doing everything that i can to educate other white people i it, mm. i just want to say from the get-go at the beginning of this conversation that it is not the the burden of um the black ex black person in our society to mm. educate the white people it's yeah. it's just not right, it, and um and I played I I've fallen into that and it's something that I regret, and um you coming into this conversation as a friend is just so I feel so honored by it and I feel really yeah. grateful for you just you. you know talking about your work and talking about what you do and really what I want this conversation to be is people hearing about your work now and and your message <laughs> and your heart that that's what it's about because it's amazing yeah. so why do you kick off why do you just tell us a bit yeah. about you and maybe um. Yeah, beginning the page and everything that's going on for you at the moment. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you for that. And it's it's like it's such a privilege to be here. So thanks for mm -hmm. having me. Um, so just I wanted to just say um, maybe like three disclaimers before we start. So um, number one is that I'm of um, mixed heritage. So my mum is white British and my dad is black Jamaican. Um, so I understand that being mixed means that 
I have privilege um, and I do recognize that. I grew up with a white mum. I grew up in a white area um, and I've benefited from the same structural systems that white people benefit from. So first of all, I just want to make that really clear. And second of all, I want to say that I'm not speaking on behalf of the whole of the black community because mm -hmm. my experience is going to be very different to a darker skinned black woman. Um, and I realized that as well. So I just wanna make mm -hmm. that really clear. Um, however, I have experienced racism. Um, unfortunately, um, I have been subject to it and I have a story and I just really feel mm -hmm. that I'm kind of here to share that a little bit. Um, and then the second thing is, is that I do have a faith. I'm a Christian, I believe in God. Um, however, our platform isn't a Christian based platform because it's open for everyone and we don't want to exclude anyone. Um, I want to make that clear that for me, that is a massive part of my life and a massive part of my journey and, and why I'm here today. So some of that might come into the conversation naturally, um, but I just want to respect that there's people listening who maybe don't have a faith, um, who don't believe mm. in, in anything, and that is fine. Um, and yeah. so don't want to exclude anyone from that. And number three, I'm really not a professional in any way. <laughs> like I am, this is totally out of my comfort zone. Um, this I, is your first um, Instagram live. This is it? my first Instagram live. And I'm just like, I, yes. if you should, I'm literally sweating. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I'm not <laughs> like I'm not a professional like I do not have a degree in this I'm not academic in any way I just believe that for some reason I've been given a voice and I want to use it and people are listening cool. and I'm really grateful for that so that are my three disclaimers just you know so and good. and also I'm I'm a human my thoughts change all the time I'm learning so there might be things that I say or you say tonight Josh that people will relate to and that's great but I do encourage you as well to go away and think about what you think you know not just take yeah. everything yeah. that we say so yeah so that are kind of my disclaimers um so yeah. how we started yeah me so it's actually me and my sister Naomi hi Naomi uh we run the page together and it's something that we've always wanted to kind of do we've always spoken about but we've never really known what to do or like how to really express you know how we're feeling and our experiences and I think a lot of that really is because we never really felt like anyone wanted to listen like right. we grew up in a very white um area like I kind of said and my mum brought us up who's white and so our kind of experience was very different because a lot of our a lot of the racism that we experienced was was very subtle like it right. was very kind of like you'd be in a conversation then you come away being like hang on what was that yeah. just said like you know it was just very and some things were quite blatant and then not really knowing how to say it and just yeah so that was kind yeah. of our experience so we were always like oh we we know we want to share something but we feel like no one really wants to listen or why would they mm -hmm. listen because mm -hmm. it's sort of like our problem um mm. and then we started to kind of educate ourselves and and we did a lot of reading listening to podcasts and we wanted to yeah read more about race and white supremacy and all of that sort of thing and we realized that actually our whole lives we've just been gaslighted <laughs> so right. we were right. basically made to feel like it was our problem yeah um, and we were like, oh, you know, and once we started to learn that there's actually terminologies that actually exist to your, like, your experience, because most of the time I'm like, I feel a certain way, but I don't really know why, or I don't really right. know what that is. And then suddenly I'm, like, reading these books, and someone is literally writing my life in a book, and I'm like, what? Yeah. And there are real words to it, and I'm yeah, like, right. oh, it does actually mean something. Um so then I think once we kind of realized that um we were like okay we we have got something to share and um some of you might have seen it but um a video mm. was put out um of me confronting um some racists on a train last year um and that actually went quite viral it was quite a 
yeah. it, it was just a mad time. So um, if you haven't seen it, it's just, you can see it on our page, but basically there were a couple of racists on the train. The train ticket guy was asking them for that ticket, you know, just doing his mm -hmm. job. And they responded by basically saying, well, have you got an effing passport to get into the country, you know? Okay. And then kind of the classic, oh, you're always using the black card. And, um, and then when he said, you know, that's racist, they were like, oh, well, I've got two mixed race kids. How can I be racist? <laughs> and then that's when I kind of stood up and said, no, that is not yeah. okay. Um, yeah. and and that, can, I, can I just say that real mm. quick? I want to interrupt you. But just just wanted to acknowledge what you did there, because you know you're going to move on, and I just wanted to acknowledge just the bravery and the courage in that. I, you know, I don't know if you ever find this where you, you double tap, and you like something, but then you yeah. don't actually tell the person like or comment that was amazing. But now I just I just wanted to affirm that of like that's courage in that video. And if you haven't seen it, do watch it just for the just to see what it looks like to confront racism in a public place. So. Now, yeah. I just want to honor you and acknowledge Thank your bravery you. and your courage in doing that. Thank yeah. you. That, you that does, it means a lot. It means a lot. Because um, when it has actually happened, I didn't want to, I didn't even want to put it out there. I was actually quite embarrassed by it. Um, I really didn't think I handled it in the right way at all. Um, I was obviously really kind of traumatized by it. It was a very yeah. upsetting experience. And I just hid it, really. Because I think, first of all, just, I kind of just my whole life people have not really responded how I want them to respond so mm -hmm. I kind of thought if I if I show people I put it out there it's not really going to get the I don't want it's not a sympathy thing it's a that is awful that should not happen you know that's the mm -hmm. response I wanted mm -hmm. and felt like I probably wouldn't get that and you know yeah. um so then recently, obviously, with everything that's been happening in America, which has been awful, and I know we're going to touch base on that um, maybe a bit later, but um, I really felt I've been sharing some stuff and I've been a bit active on social media, and all my responses were from my friends and um, people that I know were, oh, it's so bad what happens in America oh, you know, I can't believe that still happens. Oh, you know, it's heartbreaking. And I'm like, what? Do people yeah. honestly think that this is an overseas thing? Do people honestly right. think that this is not happening? And I'm quite um, a practical person, I'm quite a visual person. So I was like, what is it that I can show to make just my friends? It was just my close mm -hmm. network to understand that this is a thing. This is like on our doorstep. It's not a global thing. It's not an overseas thing. It's not an uh, American problem. Right. And so I put the video up and it just, it went. And our good friend, Governor B, he um, kindly mm -hmm. shared it as well because he was like, you need to put this up and I'm grateful for him for that because he was always like, we need to share this. Like people need to see it. Yeah. And I was like, no. Um, and he yeah. shared it and that was it. And it just went, it went viral. And I think after that, me and my sister were like, this is the time we need to put, we need to build a platform. Mm -hmm. um, because I think what it did is it made a lot of people and, and it, a lot of black people saw it who were like finally a video where someone is actually saying something and it isn't you know it doesn't just end in just tragedy or people just leaving and walking away from the situation it's actually someone is saying something um yeah, and then it made us yeah it's just confronting um and then it just made us realize that maybe we need to start a platform where people can share their stories and um yeah and share their experiences and yeah. then kind of just went from there really yeah, yeah do you know what i think you i mean i just want to keep saying this throughout just follow this page it's every everyday racism underscore right mm. that's, that's yeah always, sorry yeah i always yeah, underscore. The underscore. yeah. so <laughs> i think what's impacted me so much about following it is is uh, or initially, obviously, that video, yeah, it was like half a million views or something like that, or a million yeah, views. Yeah, well, even? yeah, it's got a million between Twitter and a million Instagram. Views. Yes, Crazy. amazing. Yeah, but you, then you follow up with the stories where people you, you write these like amazing, like long, like captions where it's mm -hmm. really someone just sharing their story, and 
um, that has been so impactful for me. The name is powerful, Everyday Racism. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's easy to think that racism is kind of isolated to these huge events, yeah. almost historical events, yeah. rather than something that's granular and actually like yeah. a part of the, the, the black brown experience, you know, yeah. that people of color are experiencing racism every single day. And so yeah. I, I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. Um, mm. I, I have found in my desire to communicate with other um, white friends about racism and about it being systemic and about it being ingrained into our culture, mm. the response is often confusion, right? It's, it, it's I, I, I just can't fathom that we are, our culture is actually racist or that, that is yeah. actually, you're saying the system is racist and it sounds so big, but what we're saying is, Every single day, people experience racism. Yeah. And that is because of you know, ignorance. And I just would love you to speak to that a little bit of your experience and perhaps some of the stories that you've been sharing as well. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Um, first of all, it's my sister that writes everything. She's amazing. She's very clever. She's a teacher, so she got to give her credit for that. She's very good at her words. Um, but yeah, we've had some, ama some really brave people share that story because it, it's really vulnerable and it's really um, traumatizing having to like, you know, write up these stories and, and try and, and relive them um, mm. so that other people can hear them. And it, whether it's other people, other black or brown people hearing so that they can support or whether it's um, white or white person people who are looking in, trying to educate themselves, you know, um, that's kind of where it started yes. um and then we sort of realized that we were getting a lot of white followers which is great right. um and then obviously after the whole amy cooper and the george floyd murder um for some i mean i don't know what you think on this josh but like i really found after that and i don't know if it was because we're in a pandemic and people are at home and they are like just on social media or whether it's because when you watch that video, um, I mean, there are just like, there are no words. It was just, no. yeah, it's, um, oh yeah, it's another level, but I don't know whether it was that, that suddenly just woke people up. Like mm -hmm. suddenly there's been this shift where people have gone, and I mean, white people have gone, oh, mm -hmm. wait, I have got white privilege. Wait, like, I do benefit from this system. Like, this is a deep-rooted, like, systemic racism. I'm part of the, you know, this this construct and, and since birth. And actually now yeah. saying that I'm not racist isn't enough. I have to be anti-racist. It's this sudden, sudden, you know, yes. like, whoa. And, um, yes. and I think what's, um, I think that's brilliant. Don't get me wrong. I think it's excellent. And mm -hmm. I think what we find is a lot of people who follow us um, want to learn because they have zero experience talking about race mm. and they want to learn and they want to know more. Um, but also I find it's really problematic because suddenly now black and brown people have been living um, in the water of racism since the dawn of time um, and we're exhausted, we're traumatised, we're frustrated right. and suddenly, you know, this video has made people wake up and there's so many people going, but I've been telling you this, like, this isn't a new thing. Like I've been talking to you mm. about this and now for some reason, like you're wanting to listen and I'm in a time where I'm mourning. Like I'm, I'm, I'm traumatized. I'm in trad, like, you know, I'm in at a loss. Um, and for me and my sister, like our whole lives, I feel like it might be a weird analogy, but I feel like we've just been like carrying a carpet around with us. And every time we bring something mm -hmm. up, someone's just sweeping it under the carpet because they don't want right. to hear. And now suddenly, you know, people are wanting to learn and they're on the phone and they're wanting to like ask us questions. And, and we're like, whoa, what is, you know, what's going on? Um, and we know this is an wow. opportunity for change. Um, we've never seen this before in our community and the world. And I say 
I'm talking about me and my sister because we've literally only been doing this for five minutes. So I'm not a professional in any way, but like this does seem very different. Um, and we know that we have enormous privilege um, and, you know, we, but we know that we've been given a platform to be able to share and share experiences. Um, so we just feel like this isn't a time to back down. We want to talk straight. We want to yeah. make sure that people like, you know, people can share how they're feeling and, but we're, we're not going to kind of, sugarcoat it you know this is a really serious mm -hmm. thing so if you're here to learn like you need to learn um yes. and we want to signpost people to um informate like different information and there's amazing like anti-racial racist um educators out there who have been doing this yeah. their whole lives they they have put mm -hmm. their blood sweat and tears into this like you know they um they've dedicated their lives into doing this. So we want to signpost people to that because we're not saying anything new. Like me and my sister, the stuff that's on our page is not new. This isn't like mm -hmm. brand new information. This is stuff mm -hmm. that has been going on for years, but mm -hmm. for some reason now people want to listen to it. Great. But we're now saying, okay, we need to like, you know, we need to help educate people in that. So, yeah. Yeah. Nat, it's, it's amazing. Uh, there, there's been some comments as you've been talking, which is just like, wow, Nat is so good at this. And I just, you, Nat, you really are like, you're so good at communicating. And he, uh, like, you're, you're, you're able to take very complex things and communicate them in a really tangible way. And there's something that you've talked about, which I think is just worth acknowledging again, is even with your page, with what your sister, you and your sister are doing, which is so wonderful and so powerful and enlightening. I, I just think it's so important to acknowledge what you said there of like, this video has caused this kind of global awakening for white people. But the general experience for people, for black people, people of color is, we're so tired of having told you this for so long. So even what you and your sister are doing is so noble. And yet, I, I, I don't know, I just want to acknowledge that I'm so grateful you're doing it. And yet it's so, it's, it's a burden that you have to do it, you know, mm. and y y that you're still having to educate. And, um, I just, I think out, out of this time, one, one piece of uh, something that we, we white people need to, need to get is it is for us to yeah. educate ourselves and others, you know, yeah. and it shouldn't be on you. Um, mm. And we're, I'm so grateful for your humility and your willingness to enlighten us. But it, I just, that is honestly one thing that I think just has to, we have to really grab hold of, you know. And so I just want to ask you a question because in this like week, two weeks, there is like literally new dictionary terms for people, for, for white people that, that we're learning, right? Yeah. Genuinely, like people haven't acknowledged what, what, does, actually, what does prejudice actually mean? Mm -hmm. what, does, what does racism actually mean? You talk about being yeah. anti-racist. I wonder if you would just spend a minute explaining what you mean by, there's a difference to saying, I'm not racist, to, to being anti-racist yeah yeah sure so i think when you say i'm not racist what you're doing is you're literally removing yourself from that situation so you're going i'm not racist nothing to do with me close the door that 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 is what you're doing um so when you say yeah i'm not i'm not racist okay yeah you might not be racist but you actually still contribute to white supremacy mm -hmm. and and the system and white supremacy is such a it's quite a scary, it is a scary word because when you think of white supremacy, mm -hmm. you think of like the KKK and you think of like these really far right like movements and like I'm sure like there's a lot of people like on our page are watching that are not part of that and are not, would not mm -hmm. say that that is them and yeah, that's fine. But mm -hmm. unfortunately there is an element where because of your privilege and because of the fact that it's just born in you, um, yeah, yeah, you are a part of that. Then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. But I think it's recognizing that, and it's recognizing that you are where you are because you're because you're white or you're light skinned mm -hmm. or, you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, at the moment, white people are are superior. They're at the top, so mm -hmm. you can't get out of that. So it's then working out. Okay, so how can I? Um, 
does a good analogy about um you know being at the table and it's Mm -hmm. as a white person you're sitting around the table and are you going to invite someone to the table are you going to invite black and brown people to the table Mm -hmm. yeah but are you going to give up your seat you know that's Mm -hmm. different we can do that wow. and i think i think that's from ben Lindsay. so i can't okay. take credit for that i think it's from ben Lindsay. i've heard it from him um but that's it it's like are you actually going to give up your seat and what does that look like and it is you know and it's it's difficult so wow. it's working out what that actually looks like and i think being anti-racist is actually being active is actually being um doing something it's not just saying it it's not just sharing a post on Facebook um even though like the black square thing brilliant but it's not enough Mm -hmm. um so it's okay what are your next steps what are you learning what are you reading are you doing anti-racism courses are you learning about our history are you like reading are you understanding about slavery like you understanding where how far we've come and actually all the things that are in slavery are still here now like have you read the um Willie Lynch um, speech where he talks right. about how we've um, how you make a slave a slave for a thousand years a thousand years okay and when you read that there are things in there that you are like okay I see that's why it's the way it is now because yeah. we are still we are still in that system we're still doing wow. it um which is just mad in itself because you're like oh okay i understand culturally why things are the way they are and um yeah. read it if you haven't read it read it read it read it read it yeah making a slave yeah. thanks jasmine yeah it's it's yeah. fascinating um and it will make you understand why we are where we are now so i think that is the difference it's actually how am i actively educating myself but how am i then actually going out and making a change um and and I want to go through some action points um, at Brilliant. some point, which we can do now or could do later. Let's do but it. Yeah, I wanna... Come on, let's do it. Okay, yeah. So I want to go through some action points because I think um, what I find, especially with um, the Everyday Racism page, is that people are just wanting to know, what do I do? What do I do? Mm-hmm. Um, and firstly, I would say action is really important. But if you still need time that is okay. So what I want to quickly start with is the phrase white fragility. So we've posted on it today, actually. Um, And white fragility is the discomfort, a discomfort um, that is a part of a white person when they're confronted by information about racism, inequality and justice. So it's when you basically you can't handle it so you end up kind of either going silent or you get defensive or you cry mm-hmm. or you do different things so that's white fragility and I've definitely experienced a lot of people going through that over the last couple right. of weeks for sure, um, for, sure. For, for sure so and I think mm. um what's interesting with white fragility is there's kind of two ways you can go with it so you can recognize that you've got white fragility And you can say, okay, I've realized all this stuff. I'm now really defensive, but I want to work out why I'm defensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's point number one. We've got point number two, where you've realized all this stuff, you're really defensive and you will never let it go. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. you're like, no, I'm not going to accept that I'm white privilege. I'm not going to accept this. And that's the end of it. And if you are in category number two, there is no point even trying. There's no point even coming to the conversation because you're never going to understand it because you're never going to understand that, unfortunately, you're wrong. <laughs> and you're <laughs> never going to be met. And anything that's going to be said is always going to be met with an argument and it's right. always going to be defensive. So if you're in category number one, mm-hmm. I actually think that's really good because what you're suddenly realising is, yes, I have white fragility. Yes, I'm defensive but I want to learn why. And that's a yeah. really, really good place to be in. So that's, I will say that just as an encouragement. Now that's so, it, can I just say it's so, you naming it is so good because like you just said, so many people have, it, you just naming it, is naming the experience that for a lot, for many, um, is kind of what freezes you. And yeah. I think being able to name it is just, is just an opportunity to sort of diagnose, okay, on the map, there I am you know you look at Matt this is where you are rather than just feeling frozen of like I'm out it's like no white fragility this is where you are 
Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. And I think also that feeling as well of like, I feel defensive and I feel attacked and then feeling guilty for that is such a horrible, it's horrible because, because it, it, it's not a nice feeling, but you've recognized it. So it's good. So, so then once you've realized that, I would say the next thing is, is that you need to take the time to work out why you feel like that and you need mm. to educate yourself. And I, I would definitely start with learning about slavery because as soon as you learn about that, I think you will totally get it and you'll understand it. Okay. Um, but that's where personally I, I would say. Um, and also I feel like if you're in a place where you just need to learn, sometimes going into action straight away um, can cause you to miss the point. So without mm -hmm. actually educating yourself properly, that can actually be problematic in the long run. So I would also say like, if you are in the category where you're like, no, I get it. I understand my privilege. I want to go and I want to like do stuff. Brilliant. But if you're in the place where you're like, I don't get it. Um, I, the, none of this makes sense to me. I need to understand more. Um, then if you need to take time to educate yourself, then do that. And there's some smaller action points that you can do within that. But I think when you jump straight in head first, mm. you know, you could definitely miss the point. And I think that's even more problematic. Actually. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think th where to start, I would research literature, um, support mm. your learning, um, read information from mm -hmm. black and brown authors, um, Better still, start a book mm. club. I've got some amazing friends mm. from my church That's who such a good idea. have started ha are reading Ben Lindsay. We need to talk about race, and they've started a book yeah. club in our church and um, with my friends. And actually, said like you can come, Natalie, or you can not. And I said actually, I don't want to. I think you need to do this, mm. and they're just doing it on their own. I haven't had to start that. Um, book onto an anti-racism course there are some amazing courses out there learn start a conversation mm. with people who um, you know you don't actually know how they respond so you know it's going to be a difficult conversation mm. start those conversations mm. because that's where you will learn um, follow accounts on Instagram yes we have our accounts but we have everyday racism but there's Black Lives Matter there's Stand Up for Humanity mm. there's the Rachel Cargill um, Instagram like follow accounts and then from there work out where you can actually act um like I can't spoon feed yes. you information but I've got some amazing like stories from people from our page who have just got it and they're just going for it and um there was a woman from our page who's got a loads of followers she's um a famous interior designer um and she used her platform to give away five interior designs wow. um to her followers and then she gave the money to black lives matter you know right. um yeah. Then we've got a 17 year old girl. She couldn't go to protest in, a protest in London. So in Kent, she went out and did a protest on the street with her family, like social distance, mm -hmm. of course. But mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. she just went and did it. And you're like, yeah, you get it. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's just some really simple online ways that you can obviously like act. But, you know, that's some straight, straight things. Um, and then... I'd say when you actually want to step out and act, firstly, don't be afraid to get it wrong because you're going to get it wrong. You will, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, don't ask black and brown people to educate you unless they invite you to the conversation. I cannot stress that enough. There have been so, so many messages. Now. And like, unless you have been asked, do not ask them. And be prepared mm -hmm. to be uncomfortable because it is going to be an uncomfortable journey. And um, yeah. just some, some real action points in that. Use your privilege for giftings. If you are a designer, if you can like, you know, write music, or film or help people help black accounts who need that you know um if you use your privilege vote like petition mm -hmm. call your local council or government like ask them what they're doing protest give people resources pass on your books like spend your money spend your money on mm -hmm. businesses run by black and brown people use black creators contribute to charities so um who are on the front line working you know um, 
if you run if you run a church if you run events who are you asking to speak and if you're asking black and brown people to speak pay them <laughs> like pay them Come on. to do that yes. amplify black yeah. people amplify them share 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 but buy black art um share stories you know there's so many ways um and also stand up for racism, call it out. Like if you hear it, say something. And I know that's scary, but learn some basic responses. Um, you don't have to be this amazing articulate person to be able to argue. You don't have to suddenly give the facts and dates of like, you know, slavery and when things have ended. And like, you don't need to do any of that. Um, just learn some simple examples. We're going to do this next week on our page just of like, how do you respond? But one thing is if someone says something controversial, or someone says something racist, mm. just reply being like, what did you mean by that? You know, can you just, mm. can you just tell me what, what was yeah. it that you meant? Because then what it does is it puts it back in their corner. It puts it, the ball back in their court and they can be like, oh yeah, what did I mean by that? Or, um, oh, you know, and it has to make them explain it and they have to think about, am I just saying this because this is what I've learned from my, my parents or this is what I heard on the yeah. news and or on Facebook or whatever and I'm saying it yeah. or do I actually believe what I'm saying, you know? And I think it's like those little things that just will help. Um, yeah. And also, I just want to do a quick quote from... And some people might have read it, but it's me and white supremacy by Layla Saad. And um, yeah. she says the following, okay. it's an amazing book. If you've not read it, you need to read it. But she says, this work is hard. There is no way to sugarcoat it. White supremacy is evil. It's a system of oppression that has been designed to give you benefits at the expense of the lives of black people. And it's living inside you as an unconscious thought and belief. The process of examining it, examining it, sorry, I can't say that, is the, is, um, and dismantling it will be painful. It will be like waking up to a virus that has been living inside you all these years and you never knew it was there. And when you begin to interrogate it, it will fight back to protect itself and maintain its position. Um, and I love, I just think that is like spot. On um, wow. and then like a virus, it, I know, it's like like a virus. Like it's like, oh. um, and there are no shortcuts. Unfortunately, this is a process. Mm. It is a journey. It's long. It's hard. You will make mistakes, but how you how you put them right is what you will you know you will learn out of that. Mm. Um, and so I'm talking mainly to white people here, but also what I want to say to the black community is that right now. Um, please look after yourself look after your mm. mental health um, keep your boundaries do not feel like mm. you have to answer any questions if you do not want to because you do not have to um, connect with other black people who understand and who you can trust um, and be careful online um, be careful what yeah. you're reading be careful what you're looking at because everything is very traumatic there's a lot of triggers um, and it's really hard at the moment, but I just mm. want you to know that this is not, you don't have to do anything in this. This mm. is, this is white yeah. people's responsibility now, and it is time for you to step up. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of, wow. I, want to say on that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like as you're talking, I feel so emotional and I'm like, I, I was asking myself, why are you feeling emotional right now, Josh? And it, it is honestly because I feel grateful. I feel emotional because the reason that white people such as myself have been waking up is because of the humility of black and brown people in this moment to be teaching, mm. teaching in a way they never should have had to. That's why like, I feel emotional because I feel, I feel, so, I feel so grateful. I really do. And mm. Like, if we were in a room right now, there'd be a standing ovation. Would there not be everyone on Instagram live? It's so weird, you know? And <laughs> and I, we haven't got a crazy amount of time left because Instagram cut yeah. you off. But if you've got a question, please, and add, are you up for yeah. a couple of questions? Yeah, I can try. <laughs> if, you, if, you've got, if you've got a couple of questions, you can, there's a, there's a question tab, you can send them in. But um, 
Yeah, I, I know I keep repeating mm. myself, but I think it's really worth repeating. I feel so grateful because you shouldn't have to do this. And mm -hmm. the reason that the reason that there is a global awakening and there is a global awakening, you know, I, I'm, this is, journey, yeah. I've been on this journey for five, six years, um, you know, and, and part of that has been because, you know, I have the honor of marrying into a black family um, mm -hmm. and I have the, you know, I grew up around, I grew up my whole life. I've benefited from black culture, you know? Yeah. And so I, I've been on this journey just because for a little while for those reasons. And I, I, I shared with some friends yesterday, I said, look, the, the closest thing that I can describe this journey to is, is losing your faith mm. in this respect. You, you, you're, you're, there's a point in, it, in all spirituality where you have to have a faith that is yours authentically. And you realize that perhaps what was handed to you wasn't actually true. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's devastating. And I just want to, I just want to name it. It is actually, yeah. and, and what you're talking about, white fragility, there's a feeling of devastation because you realize, oh, I, 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 I was lied to. And, yeah. and it's, yeah. that's a, that, that, and I really mean yeah. that. I was taught history yes. from the perspective of the oppressor. And it changes when you realize that when I read history now, I, I identify with the oppressor, right? Mm. And it's a very humbling situation and it's like the losing of faith it's like the losing of something that you just took for granted and then you realize yeah. actually perhaps it's different than I, than what mm. i once thought it was you know yeah. and um but it, it's i say all of that to say it has to be done and i love how you named white mm. fragility and it's the beginning and so i just want to say mm. to you know i'm saying this to to my white friends all the time but it's it, it feels so hard and it feels so yeah. difficult and that's yeah. exactly why it has to begin because mm. what we're feeling as white people isn't even on the same it's, it's no. i don't even want to say the words it's not mm. just right yeah that pain you feel that pain yeah. you feel is the compass right go yeah. towards the pain like this yeah. is going to get more and more painful and it should and it right yeah. and it's rightly so and and that's why i feel grateful because you're taking time every time you post on your account you're doing something you should never have had to have done mm. and i'm so grateful that you keep doing it you know and you keep you. you keep persisting in it so um yeah yeah you. Nat, you're amazing honestly you. and i just want to say josh as well your um poem to call it a poem or spoken word yeah you well, it? You know. poem? it was amazing and was if you haven't listened to it it is brilliant is it check your check your blind spot is yeah check right? your blind spot yeah yeah. yeah and it was just it was just so good and um, how you said it was just so powerful um and i love it and i love what you're doing with that as well and and i'm guessing is that more of a resource that you're gonna yeah totally so the the, the poem came out of you know just just that analogy i, I learned mm -hmm. to drive late in my life and i and you know every time you leave that when, when you leave where you're parked you gotta check your blind spot why because yeah. the mirrors on your car don't reveal what's in your blind spot yeah and so yeah. you can you, you know as a white person i can be like no I, I i know i know this situation i know i understand history because i've yeah. been given mirrors i can see there i can see i can see that right yeah but i can't see there yeah. and the problem is if someone walks there and i reverse and i have a look backwards and i run them over mm. it was always my fault for not checking it wasn't yeah, their fault. Wow. They didn't know when I was going to sell so the good. car. It yeah. was my fault. I didn't look backwards. And yeah. so my point is the damage that I've done in my life to, to, to friends, um, black and brown friends, is because I never checked my blind spot. And so mm. I said things. And now I'm being honest. I'm so guilty. Of, you know, I've made these jokes. Mm. And, I've, and all, of, all of this has come out of this mm. blind spot. And, it, and it, it's so dangerous. Ignorance is yeah. so dangerous. And once I woke up to that, it, everything changed. And so I wrote a poem to just share that story. Um, you know, there's a line in the poem where it just goes, you know, uh, like this, the, the, this very poem that I'm saying, my flow and my cadence, where do you think it came from? Mm. All our favorite music has its origin in slavery. Yes. Do you yes. know what I'm saying? Like my, the, my very cadence, you know, and it's like, yeah. So yeah, so I, the website checkyourblindspot.co.uk is a, a website I've made for white people to check their blind spot so that really black good. and brown people don't have to do the work for them, the work they should never have been asked to do and never mm. been expected to do. And and that you 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 I mean I'm just I'm just putting stuff up there that you that you you've already talked about, you know. There's tons of Instagram accounts. 
the, the book that okay. has really helped me was Rainy Edda Lodge. Um, yeah. Why I'm, talk why I'm no longer talking about race to white people. Yeah. From for the for the Black British, you know, story, and you mm. know, just debunking that lie, like you said at the beginning, yeah. that this is a an American situation. Yeah. This is very much a British situation. Mm. Um, the slave trade has existed here in the most prevalent ways, and we and and I'm still benefiting from the system that built the slave ships, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now nah, I'm grateful for you. Mm, so yay. I just want to again, um, everyday racism at everyday racism underscore underscore yes yeah. Give me a minute while I just type it into the comments right now, right? Thank Hold you. Up. Yeah, this is so weird. <laughs> it's so strange, isn't it? Every, so now, it, what what is your favorite account at the moment now that you're following? That you're like, oh, oh this is. Um, I love. Stand Up for Humanity is really good. Yes. Um, the Rachel Cargill account is unbelievable. Mm. Um, I like my two favourite. Oh, I like Ai yeah. Wei as well. Ai Wei is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but if you just go into who we're following and look at all those accounts, you'll see. Like, I, would just, I would just follow all of those. <laughs> yeah, done. you're in there as well, Josh. Done. So yeah. you know, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I, um, I'm going to save this conversation and share this conversation because Nat, yeah. you you are really good at this. Oh, you're thanks. an amazing communicator, educator. you I'm thank so you. glad we've done this, and I'm so excited yeah. to hear you speak and thank hear your you. stories. You're you're, you're phenomenal. You. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you for joining everyone. Like, I always like, yeah, think, like, we've been, in a I think there's been about 50 people on this whole time. That's so just mad. imagine that, like, we've been in a room. Imagine we hired out this, yeah. this amazing venue with 50 <laughs> seats. It was sold out the whole time. Yeah. It was a beautiful experience. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. There. Oh, no. Thank you so much, everyone. Amazing. All right. <laughs> Speak soon. Speak soon. <laughs>